And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Ryan Metzler. Hey everyone, it's Ryan Metzler here, and today we're going to be taking a look at Venture Forth by Minion Games. And this is a game for two to four players that'll play in about an hour to an hour and a half. Uh, and it's going to be a game which kind of combines a Euro type of mechanic uh, where you're placing cards and trying to maximize the right placement of cards and getting cubes and trying to use those cubes in order to get points with a uh, fantasy adventure type of genre. So it's, it's attempting to do something a little bit different here. Um, why don't we take a look at what comes in the side, inside the box, how the game plays, and then I'll give you my thoughts on whether or not this conglomeration of Euro and fantasy works out well. So here we have the board of Venture Forth set up for four players. And this is going to be your fantasy world. And there's these different temples which have different abilities uh, that you'll be traveling to and from in order to try and do things. And at the beginning of the game, everybody is going to have some of these cards. They're called encounter cards. Everyone will have a hand of these encounter cards. And what these cards are going to do is they're going to be monsters and different types of heroes that you can get into your party. So, for example, we have uh, the Chimera here. You can see the Chimera. He wants knowledge, and he has a strength of 12. Uh, or you have the Satyr here, who has a strength of 7, and he wants wealth. Likewise, you're going to have heroes, and heroes will be part of your party eventually if you decide to recruit them. Uh, for example, here we have a tracker. He has a two power here. He is looking for knowledge, and then down at the bottom, he aspires to discover trail. And that means he wants to encounter a wandering adventure, and I'll get into that momentarily, but know that each of your guys is going to have some type of goal that they want to accomplish. So everyone's going to have a hand of these cards, and they're going to choose on which of these temples they would like to start, and then they're going to start playing the game. And they're going to do so by first taking one of these heroes from their hands and adding it to their party. So let's say they chose this guy here, they would add him to his party. Uh, this would go down in front of the player, we'll just set it there for now, and that would be the beginnings of his party. And in addition to his hero, that hero is going to get a level card. And these cards will tell you what abilities your hero has any time that they manage to uh, accomplish their objective on their card. So if they accomplish their objective, they can pay one cube to get three money, or three victory points, sorry, or they can pay two cubes to get rid of a despair, which are bad cubes, which will count for negative victory points at the end of the game, get four victory points, and they will be able to level up, which will simply flip this card to its other side, giving them better abilities. Now, during the game, you're going to have several choices of what to do on your turn. As a matter of fact, you have four choices. The first is going to be to play a card from your hand to the board. And you'll see that these temples have different colors. There are two green, a purple, a blue, and kind of an orangish color. And those are going to match the color of cards in your hand. For example, green cards or blue cards, like the ones here. Anytime you play a card, you have to play it either next to a temple of the same color or next to another card on the board of the same color. So, for example, if I wanted to play my Kraken, I can play him out next to this blue building. And you'll see each of these different tiles has different things printed on it. And I'll go over what those do real quick. For example, this one here is going to, when you place a card on it, give you one money. So you would take one of these money and you would put it into your resource area, which is going to allow you to buy more heroes when you venture forth. You could place on this one and get a money or a will. And will are the cubes you can use to pay anytime one of your heroes accomplishes his objectives in order to get victory points or to level him up. If you place on one of these spots with both a circle and a little icon on it, so uh, you have this brown circle, you get to take one of these Venture Forth discs and put it out anywhere on the board that doesn't have one. And you'll see there are spots next to these different paths for these little discs. And these discs will depict on them different things. For example, you can see this one here shows two blue cards and that you get to keep one of the blue cards and you get one money when you take this. And you will take it for venturing forth later on a turn. So let's say the person decides to play it there after having placed an orange card right here. The next spot with the plus on the will cube is going to let you take two will and you would get to put those on one of your characters and your opponent would get to take one will and put it on one of their characters, essentially giving you and them both a benefit. So now you would play one of your cards down, for example, let's say I played this here, and I would take my money. And that would be the end of my turn. At the end of my turn I would draw a card and add it to my hand, uh, and then my next player would go and they would have a choice of what to do on their turn. Uh, and at the beginning of the game it's going to be a, playing a lot of different cards. You'll be putting cards out, so maybe they want to play an eagle out to the board and they would get a cube and they put a disc out. Uh, and you would keep doing this, each player playing in order, doing something like this, putting out a card, until some of these paths got filled up. 
Uh, so when these paths got filled up, let's say this was played here, and this was played here, and it is now the blue player's turn. And he decides to venture forth. And what that means is he's going to encounter everything along this path between the purple mountains and the green wilderness temple. And he would do these one by one. So he's going to move to the eagle, which has an attack of six, or a, a hit points of six, and his adventuring party needs to beat that with their attack. But his adventuring party is only attack of two. Now, at any point, for each of your adventurers, you can remove one will cube from them to double their attack, but this won't do any good for the tracker, because he would still only be a four attack, lower than the six. And if you lose to a monster, meaning you can't beat its attack, you have to pay the penalties, which in this case means he would have to pay one will from one of his characters. And so he would take this will off of his character, and he would return it to the supply. And then he would move to the next spot, and he's going to encounter an explorer. Well, he's found this explorer, and the explorer is uh, a two, and this means he's going to cost two money to recruit to your party, and he's also going to provide two attack once you get him. Uh, and he seeks wealth over here, so you're going to have a wealth hero, and he's going to want to find artifacts, which means he wants to gain a treasure, which can be done by accomplishing certain things. Uh, getting some of these tokens, the blue cards are treasure when you get these tokens. And so if he encountered this card and he wanted to buy it, let's say he had two money, he would pay his two money back to the supply, take the explorer, add him to his area, and take a level one card for that explorer, placing it under him. Then he could move to the satyr, and now he can't defeat the satyr, so again he's going to have to pay the consequences, and he would have to pay him money, but he just spent all of his money. So for anything he can't pay, he has to take a despair cube. And these cubes are going to be negative victory points at the end of the game, and he would put this on one of his heroes. Uh, anything that isn't taken or killed is going to turn sideways, and these are called wanderers now. Uh, and you'll see that our guy here wants to discovering a or to encounter a wandering monster. So if he were to go back after this spot had been filled in, you can only go through completed paths unless you have a, unless you have a card that says otherwise. Uh, he would accomplish his objective, and if he were to have cubes on him at that point, he would be able to remove the cubes in order to get the benefits. So he could either remove one cube for three points, or he could remove two cubes for removing that despair he got, getting four points and going up a level. And so the objective of the game is going to be to kill guys and get more will. Uh, will will provide you with points at the end of the game and get these treasure cards that you get for completing the Venture Forth actions where there are one of these tokens. Getting these treasure cards will give you either a benefit during the game. For example, this one here uh, is the Promethean Secret, which says you can place it on an enemy along a path, uh, not connected to your site, and then if you go to the enemy, you get six points. Uh, so defeating enemies in that way, or using these treasures, or even keeping them until the end of the game and putting them on a hero who can carry them. You'll see they have the symbols in the top, like the heroes do. That will get you victory points. The third thing you can do on your turn is to contribute to one of these temples. And you'll see each of the temples has what they want on it and what benefit you get for it. So, for example, if you pay money at this temple over here, you can get rid of one despair cube and get one will cube. While the temple at the shore lets you pay one money and get two will. And so... Each of these spots is going to let you do something different. Finally, on your turn, you can discard cards from your hand in order to draw up more cards. So, essentially, you get one action per turn trying to create paths that are beneficial for you and create paths that are difficult for your opponent to go across in order to score victory points through the accumulation of will cubes, using those will cubes to level up your heroes to get more points, and to get these Venture Forth tokens to get treasure and to... Uh, earn them for the end of the game where you're going to get more points and whoever has the most or whoever has money left is going to get some victory points whoever has the the most of these tokens will get victory points and whoever has the most victory points by the end of the game will be the winner and so now you've seen the mechanics of venture forth you've kind of seen it in play a little bit and i have several comments about it i'm going to start with the negatives and then i'm going to go to the positives so the negatives on venture forth in my opinion um while the game starts out interesting and you're trying to build up your party and all of that, it's, it's a very well thought out and well designed game in that aspect. And I think it kind of fails a little bit further into the game where you've built up your party and now you have a, a maximum strength or maximum level or maximum whatever you want to call it party and they can simply just kind of roll over every other enemy in the game. You have like a maximum strength of 12 enemy and you just kind of roll over them once you reach that critical point. Now. Uh, that's my major critique of the game, so it, it kind of stagnates towards the end of the game. My positives for the game are that Minion Games has really tried something new here. They've got a fantasy 
theme with a very Euro style mechanic that take all of the luck out of the fantasy aspect. And I, I like that idea. I also like that the mechanics seem to fit the theme and everything works out very well there. So if you're interested in trying out a new theme with a kind of rehashed mechanic but one that that blends together very well, I'd say check out Venture Forth. Uh, you may enjoy the game and I definitely say it's better with more players, probably sweet spot around three rather than four or two. So check out Venture Forth by Minion Games. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find the latest board game news at Dicetowernews.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Fun Again Games, the world's best game source. Fun Again Games has over 5,000 games available. Check them out at funagain.com.